Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. I'll be here until uh, midnight uh, Eastern Standard Time here in the United States of America. I don't have a guest for the first half hour of the program, and as I always say, I'll probably go to the phones early because of that. Uh, but I, uh, I don't know. I just um, I have nothing to really talk about. You know what I did? I'm I'm in the process of rebuilding the studio. Uh, piece by piece and you know nothing ever goes in neat you know I put in some USB plugs and I said oh and these will all go in just fine and just before I went on the air I found out that I had a um, that I had a um, uh, uh, a, a snare with one of these cameras that I have on this other machine and I couldn't find where it went. And then when I plugged it in, it wouldn't work. So then I put it in somewhere else and it worked. But the trouble is that no matter how, and I rewired very neatly and that still every wire is a different length, all right? I don't know how many of you have to go through this. None of you probably have to. So what am I boring you with my diatribe about my problems in, uh, in, in fixing this up? Anyway, uh, uh, what what have I got? I've got nothing to talk about. You know, I I kept talk, I kept saying that when I was younger, uh, I spent more time out doing stuff, and so when I would go on the air, I would have things to talk about, like an adventure I had last night, or some dinner I had, or whatever. When you get older, it's just not as exciting as it was, and. Um, uh, uh, so I don't have a lot to talk about. I wish I could, you know, for the last couple of days, I've been talking about the dentist. That was, that was an event, you know, the fact that my dentist fucked up my tooth and then I'd have a, an, another dentist unsnarl it. And, uh, and it looks beautiful. By the way, I, 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 girlfriend doesn't like me talking about this because she says, yeah, you talking about, so you got your dental work taken care of and you got the dentist, the name, 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 name. And um, I go, you know something? I went, I looked at this tooth. And I, I think, I don't know if you heard the story before, and I'm not going to tell you the whole story. I'm just going to tell you the short of it. And that is, I had a tooth filled. It was filled badly. The, that night, the, the, after the filling was done, uh, the filling fell out of my tooth. Okay. A freshly put in filling. So I went in the next day to another dentist at that office because the other one was off that day. And uh, he fixed it up and put in a, a, a white crown, a composite, not crown, a composite uh, uh, filling. And all was good to go. Well, I've been looking at it in my mouth. Every now and then I take a little flashlight and look at it. And I, am, I look at it and I go, this guy is an artist. You know, the other one was like a sloppy piece of, uh, of filling put in there. And of course you could see it because it was metal. This thing, you can barely see what is filling and what is tooth. And he did such a brilliant job of restoring the shape of the tooth. And I, I, I sit there and look at it and I just go, you know, this is what I talk about. When I talk about the fact that Everybody should approach, approach what they do in life as art. Uh, and that you are, you know, no matter what you do, do it to the best of your ability. If you are a guy, uh, there's a, there was a guy at Sirius whose only job, right, at Sirius, he must have really needed a job badly. His only job was to clean the toilets. But I got to tell you, he did a bang up job of cleaning those toilets. I mean, they were pristine, all right? So 
that being the case, I, I came to the theory that anything you do, you should approach with a certain amount of virtuosity. That even if you're cleaning toilets, care enough about the job you're doing, because you took the job, to do it with some kind of virtuosity. And so one Christmas, it was the time of year where everybody was doing nice things for other people. It's the only time of year where people do nice things for other people. Uh, I saw him in the bathroom and he was cleaning up. And I went over to him and I said, I just want to thank you for having done such a nice job of cleaning up these toilets this year. I really appreciate it. And he was just astounded because nobody ever thought to stop and say to him, thank you. You know, you've got the most thankless job in, in this place. This place thinks of itself as the pantheon of show business. You know, it's Sirius XM satellite radio and we got all these shows and all these stars and blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, this guy's cleaning toilets. You know, now, and that has nothing to do with show business. And where we were getting a lot of accolades and at the, this time of year we get a little thank you from our bosses or whatever if we were lucky maybe they'd even give us a, a bonus or some or two and uh we got all those nice things but this guy what did he get you know maybe he, they gave him a little bonus at the end of the year a week's pay or something like that i don't know but nobody ever thanked him for the job he was doing and if he had done a shitty job of it not the word I should use in this case, if he'd done a shitty job of it, um, uh, I would have said, uh, oh, uh, I wouldn't have said anything, but he did a good job of it, and he took it seriously. He took the job, and he did it to the best of his ability. Now, how many of you out there would say that if you finally suddenly found yourself in, in need of money and the only thing there to do was clean toilets, would clean toilets to the best of your ability. No, you'd probably be resentful. Every, I would. I'd be resentful every second I was cleaning the toilet. But remember, in this world, folks, there are people who have to clean toilets. There are people who have to do... Uh, there was a guy who did a show on, uh, I can't remember what network. It was like A&E or something like that. And I'm trying to remember who what his name was because he became quite famous for it, called Dirty Jobs. And his whole thing was 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 going around and and... Uh, uh, seeing people who, you know, uh, following people who did essentially dirty jobs. And uh, these are the jobs nobody wants, okay? And yet, they're the most important jobs in our society. Listen, you can live without a fucking radio announcer. You can live without Sean Hannity. But you can't live without whoever it is in your office that cleans the toilets. Because if nobody was there to clean them, you would know the difference. And your life is better because of what they do. And what Sean Hannity does, or I do, or anybody else does, just piffle, it's just entertainment, you know, whatever. But there are people who do real jobs in this world that are important uh, to your life being better. And I th that and so I guess that kind of gets back to the virtuosity thing that I was talking about. That yeah, this guy could say I'm filling another fucking tooth. I mean, I don't know. I you know, there's a high high. I, I understand a high suicide rate among dentists, mainly because it's not the most exciting job in the world. You know, uh, with a doctor, with a like a, a doctor, he has to figure out what's wrong with you. It's a detective, you know. And if he's a surgeon, he has to go in and do the best possible jo job he can do of repairing that knee. But a dentist, every day, it's the same fucking thing, you know. It's open your mouth, okay, let me drill, let me put in the, uh, the, uh, the filling, okay, call me if you have any trouble. It's not an exciting job. If somebody once, a dentist once described it to me as a form of carpentry. And so when I find that there is a dentist who worked on me and I walked away, number one, feeling very good about him, uh, feeling very good about him, but also uh, feeling that the job that had been done was not only a good job, but when I looked at it, a masterful job. 
I mean, right now, if I were to open up my mouth and put the camera in the mouth and a thing like that, and I were to um, uh, say to you, okay, which tooth is the one he filled? You'd probably point out five other teeth before you got to the one he actually filled. Uh, he did that good a job. And he didn't need to. It's right here. It's right over here. And so it's not in the part of my mouth where, you know, if I've had it pulled, you wouldn't notice it gone. Um, it's, in a, it's in an area that, you know, you know, once you get back here, like I have a loose tooth back here, and one of these days that sucker is going to have to get pulled. Now, am I going to go out and get an implant? Not on your life. It's back there, okay? My business manager, who's got a lot more money than I do because he's got a lot of my money, uh, had had this tooth pulled. It seems everybody, this tooth always goes bad with everybody. Uh, had it pulled. He said, I, I didn't replace it. He said, nobody's going to see it. You know, and you get used to the, the hole back there, you know. So, you know, and, and I remember my father was missing a tooth, and it was way back there. I mean, he had to really open his mouth for me to see it, but it was, it was way back there. So if any of those go, fuck it. You know, they can go. But down here, hey, you, you want all of these. Now, that's the, that's the other thing I always said about, you know, we, we've been talking the last couple of nights about dentistry. And I, I keep saying that we have, uh, uh, you know, Obamacare, uh, but that just takes care of one part of your health, that your teeth are another part of your health. And there's, you know, to begin with, try and get dental insurance. You can get it but it only usually pays back about $1,500 of whatever you do. And you know, $1,500 is about one root canal or um, it's one crown, right? Now with my sag after I have uh, Delta Dental and I have $2,500, which is a little more reasonable, but it's not like medical insurance. Now let me give you an example of something, you know, girlfriend, Really, I, I feel so bad for her that this even happened to her. You know, uh, she was walking down the street on Fifth Avenue, tourists not looking where they were going because they were looking up at the buildings and everything. Bumps into her, knocks her over. She falls on her knee and she breaks it. That was on a Monday. On Friday, she was in the operating room and they were repairing the knee, okay? That meant a six month of a brace being on her knee at all times. Now she can have it on, only has to have it on when she goes out. Uh, but uh, she's going through intensive physical therapy, which is very painful for her, and is, a sl is going to be a slow recuperative situation. Um, now, she went, she went to Mount Sinai Hospital, and I, I don't know what the doctor got paid, because this is not in what I saw yesterday. But the bill from Mount Sinai Hospital I got yesterday. Now, you know where you always get those things. You get, you know, and they write, uh, "You may be responsible for," and then they give you a certain amount, right? The total bill for her operation at Mount Sinai. This is not the days before in the emergency ward and things like that, but just the operation at Mount Sinai, twenty-five thousand dollars. I have it right here on the computer. I looked at it last night. I saw it last night because it came in. $25,000. How much do you think she has to pay? How much she's going to be responsible for? Goose egg. Zero. Now, that's what we should do with dental. Okay? Same thing. You know, you had this, you had that, you had this, you had that. But, uh, you know. But the, I think the reason they don't have dental insurance is it's a losing bet for the most part. Uh, uh, or at least why they limit it to fifteen hundred dollars in my case twenty five hundred is because it's 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 a losing bet because where Marjorie had an accident wasn't her fault she didn't do anything to cause it um, with dentistry uh, if you if you don't take care of your teeth you don't floss you don't water pick you don't brush every day. Uh, you don't make your regular appointments to get your teeth cleaned and things like that. Uh, you very easily can get lots of dental problems, and it's very easy to get. Um, I don't.
don't know. I don't know what primitive man did. Primitive man must have had some terrible teeth because, I mean, uh, either that or they knew how to how to take care of uh, of, of uh, their teeth, you know, and how to keep them from going bad. But the fact is that you know uh, having dental insurance is a difficult go because most people are not going to be as uh, as uh, uh, judicious about keeping up their teeth so but it is different but then again you know we insure people for you know hospitalization and you go get a lung cancer operation and hey, you probably pay goose egg all right if you got enough insurance you music comes out to zero hey that's really nice uh but you probably smoked all your life so what's the difference between that and eating candy bars and getting cavities you know so I just think that uh, we need dental care and we need, you know, universal health care. There's no question about that. I mean, come on. We're, we're a rich country. We can afford to give our people something. You know, I talk about it and I've mentioned this before and I'll mention it again. The reason England has uh, uh, national health was the national health uh, uh, program was started right after World War II. And why did it start right after World War II? Because the Brits decided they wanted to give themselves a present. They wanted to give themselves a gift. And the best gift they could give would be universal health care. And so they started National Health and the National Health Hospitals. And people in England didn't have to pay a penny for their medical care. They go to, you go to a hospital in England, you, they do what they got to do, yeah, they, hopefully they fix you, you know, and then uh, you, you, as you, there's no place when you sign out to hand them your credit card because they, they don't, they don't take, they don't take a bill. So I mean, it, it, um, um, and and I know people like Phil will say, oh, well, you know, I hear it's terrible, but no, I'm sorry, British healthcare is very, quite good, and as a matter of fact, here's what they do, doctors. Uh, now, you can be a private doctor, and you can have a private practice, but that's usually reserved for very rich people who just want a private doctor. But if you're part of the national health and you're a doctor, you make about uh, the price I heard several years ago, and it probably has gone up, was uh, $200,000 a year. That's not bad. Okay, that's a good living, $200,000 a year. But you make more money based upon the performance of your patients. In other words, if, you have, if, if they're healthier and uh, you've gone through certain things to make them healthier, you get a bonus. So it really, it really has always been a very good plan and it really has worked for the Brits. And it works for the Canadians. The Canadians have it. I remember Revelstoke Jim, when he was working here, when he was doing a show here, uh, and when I got first got to know him, when I was back in the day of play TV, I said to him, so uh, how much do you pay for health insurance? I didn't know what they had up there. He says, pay? He says, we don't pay for health insurance. We have health insurance. We have health. Get sick, you go to the hospital. They fix you up, you go home, and that's it. You're not lighter in the, in the wallet uh, for it. And I just thought that was so amazing. And when he leaves the, left the country, like came to the United States to do stuff, he had to pay them $25 to be covered in the United States. They, it was some kind of coverage that you got when you left the country. Wow, wow, is that terrific or what? Let me just make sure I got things here right. Okay, are things okay? Yeah, things are all right, okay. Anyway. Um, so, you know, you, you really uh, 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 have to, uh, uh, you know, that whole idea of just not paying for medical. And why should you? I mean, if you have a country and the country has, is doing well financially, as ours is, I mean, we have a lot of money in this country. There are a lot of billionaires in this country. Uh, then why don't we give ourselves that gift? Why don't we give ourselves the gift of good health? I mean, and people will tell you, well, people don't have, you know, if, they're, if they can't afford to pay, they can still get medical care. Yeah, they can go to the emergency room. Uh, and they're not gonna get substandard care there, but they're gonna be like 
having to wait for hours and hours and hours and hours and be made to feel that they're on the public dole. In other words, you're not getting away with just charging us for your medical. You're also going to have to, like, be dismissed or uh, treated like you are, are vermin. Um, we need something where everybody's taken care of and we can look at each other and say, you know, we did something nice for each other. And uh, those of us who have more money than others, um, it's our it's our present to our fellow man. I don't know. It might be. It might. I'm probably just. I'm bleeding heart liberal, folks. Bleeding heart fucking liberal. I'm not a liberal. I'm a lefty. But that's because my my father made me into a lefty. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It made me into a lefty. Anyway, so that, that, that's my little rant for tonight. And it, it, it has to do with us just caring about each other and taking care of each other and uh, making sure we're, we're well taken care of. Uh, 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 God forbid, though, I mean, if we, try, if we cannot do it here in this country because uh, the medical industry, and I call it the medical industry, is so inculcated into the, into the system that to suddenly say, well, okay, guys, you're no longer going to have private practices. You're going to be working for the government, okay, would just drive a whole industry nuts because these people make a fortune out of us. Although I got to say one thing here. I feel sorry for your average doctor because it is so hard today for him to exist because of what, ins not because of like Medicare, but, but what insurance companies are trying to pay them. And get away with paying, uh, and and so I don't know how these guys. You know, I, I get my bill, and I see what, uh, what what Medicare pays them, and then I see what my insurance, the twenty percent that Medicare doesn't take care of pays them, which is far less of a percentage than the Medicare. And I go, how do these guys make a living? And how they make a living now is volume. Uh, there, I found out my GP, the guy I go to every year for my checkup, the guy I go to when I've got a problem that I, yeah, I think I have a sore throat, I think I've got strep throat, hey, okay, fine, here, take a pill, you're okay. That doctor, once, I, he had a thing where, and a lot of doctors are doing this, started a concierge service. That is, if you pay for $2,500 a year for his concierge service, you can call him in the middle of the night and he'll come make house calls, all right? So he invited all his patients to come to this meeting where they were gonna introduce this concierge service. And so I went and I was talking with somebody and I said, who, knew, who was familiar with his practice and I said, gee, there are a lot of people here. This is an auditorium and it's completely filled. He said, oh, this is only a small part of his practice. I said, how many people are, you know, go to him? He said, 3,000? <laughs> I suddenly remembered why he didn't remember my name every year. 3,000 people, but that's what he's got to do in order to survive. And, and that doesn't do you any good either. Yeah, anyway, I, I, enough of my my belly aching about that. Look at me. I took up all, the whole time I managed to talk and uh, maybe I wasn't even boring. Although there is that possibility that I was. Anyway, uh, give us a call. Uh, I just opened up the Skype lines. If you don't know how to call us, uh, go over to uh, gabnet.net. Uh, you can also see the video over there so you're not going to miss much. And just go over there, have a look, have a look-see. And uh, on the right-hand side of the page, it tells you how you can call us. It talks about Citizen Panel and Skype and how you get Skype and things you can click on to get Skype and things you can click on to call us. And uh, I'm not going to explain it right now, but, you know, do it. Anyway, uh, I'm sitting here now waiting for people to call um, because the lines are open. Uh, I... Thought Phil would be here in a second in order to just yell and scream about uh, his friend Alex the commie, you know. But anyway, here I got to do a few things so I can see that everything's okay. Well, here comes Phil. Here he comes. Here he comes. 
Yes, uh, there he is. And also, uh, Jeff Stein is coming online. So, uh, you know, uh, I think we're ready to go, aren't we? Yeah, there we go. Hello, Phil. How are you? Hey, I'm just fine. Uh, so you're you got some slap back. You, I don't have I don't have it here. Really? Yeah. Uh, talk to Jeff for a second. So I can hear it fine. You can hear it fine. See. So it's, no, I, I hear uh, slap bills. Back. Yeah, but you don't hear me slapping back at you. No, 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 no it was me. It was, uh, but okay, it's gone no. now. It's gone now. Oh, okay. <clears throat> That's nice. Uh, anyway. Uh, well, you know, we could have universal health care if uh, the uh, generals and all of the people that said that we had to get into the Iraq war, uh, you know, if we would have taken that money and spent it on universal health care, we could have it. But you know what happens when you spend the money that you have? You don't have any money left. And when you don't have any money left, you don't get universal health care. We spent it because we were conned into thinking that we had to go over there. All we should have done was gotten Saddam Hussein, tried him for war crimes, and been done with well, it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. Do you have this whole opinion when the war was going on, or is this something you have adopted from Trump who has complained that that war was useless? Well, I've adopted it from Trump. Oh, no, you Trump, fuck you Trump, then. Fuck you. Because uh, you, hey, you, if you don't like I don't was like yelling it. I was yelling it when, it was, when that was the case, okay? Hey. Trump is, is telling us what really happened. You know, uh, when you become president, there's all these secrets that they tell you, like Area 51, uh, Tim would like this, uh, Area 51 and all of those things. Maybe Trump is just telling us really what the truth is. No, probably not. I'll tell you something, though. I did, uh, I did ask um, uh, Jimmy Carter uh, the, the, that exact question, I said, you know, when you first become president, they sit you down and they tell you all the secrets, all the stuff that's going on. Hi, Rob. Uh, yeah, but Jimmy wouldn't tell us. All the stuff. No, no, no. no. Hello, all the stuff that's going on. And I said, did it scare you? And he said, you can't believe how much it scared me. He said, I heard stuff I didn't even expect, right. you know. So, uh, yes, they, uh, obviously Trump does know things uh, that we don't know, uh, but uh, who knows what exactly is the truth of anything anymore. So. Oh, I, you know. I've been out of touch. I've been at a conference in Orlando this week, so I haven't really been paying attention to the news. Is something I miss? Uh, well, the, uh, what do you call those guys? Um, his advisors? Uh, yeah. And the and the Senate uh, are uh, are rebuking Trump for wanting to pull out of Afghanistan and Syria, and uh, you, you know, and Alex is going off about oh, I want universal health care, I want universal dentistry, I want a chicken in every pot, I want two no, chickens no, no, in every no, pot. I don't want chicken a chicken in every pot, Phil. <laughs> but I do feel I do feel that the only reason we are a society is so that we pool our resources. And we take care of each other. Okay, so let, let otherwise, the Chinese give us money to universal uh, no, uh, no, other, no, because the what? Chinese, uh, 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 why'd you say that, Phil? Because I said we don't have any money to pay for it. We spent it on the war. The oh, war no. which I supported. Oh, no, you know what we spend on it on? I you know had. what we spend it on? We spend way more money than any other country in the world on our military. By about, f what is it? I think we are. We spend ten percent of our GNP. A, 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 a place like England, the highest, second highest country in spending for the military, spends ten percent of their GNP. All yeah, right. We got confidence. We into spend over fifty percent of our GNP. Right. So Trump says, "Why don't these other countries pay us?" For the protection that we give them and then you know you want universal health care with all the money hey it's great but right now it would bankrupt yeah, Phil, us. you're not making you're, you're not, not making not you're not making heads. any sense at all yeah because you're not listening you got blinders on no i don't have blinders on phil all you, you, i know oh, we got all, all i know money. why do we have a fucking country why do we have a fucking government why are we organized like we are so that we can uh, we we can all screw each other over? No, you do it because mutually you pool 
pool your resources, you become a country, and you take care of your your people. There are no resources. Why is it? Why is it we're the only industrialized country in the world outside of China? Because China doesn't have it either. It doesn't have universal health care. Why is that? Don't have any money. Well, why don't we have any money? They, we're they supposed don't even to, want to spend five we, we've been told ta- we're, we're the big, most burgeoning capitalists alive, and somehow we don't have the money. We spent trillions on a war that uh, the advisors, which are you know, you're so pro right now, the advisors are telling us that we needed. Now Trump is saying, wait, I wait, who am I? Wait, are wait, who are you saying I'm for? Well, because. Who are, if, no, wait a minute. No, I asked you. You said these people that you're for. Who are those people I'm for? The people that you feel are telling Trump that he's wrong. I uh, I I think he I think he's wrong in this particular case. But uh, okay. what, what do we, uh, we? You have some. Uh, is it is it Rob? But something's I don't know. Uh, cutting in and out a little bit. Could it be your? Uh, oh, uh, Rob. Uh, what what happened to Rob? Maybe he's uh, he turned his camera off. Here, I, yeah. no, it's the uh, Wi-Fi in this room is not good enough to support video tonight. So, yeah, well, you know, Rob, audio. if we didn't spend all that money on the Iraq War, you could have had free Wi-Fi. Oh, it's free. It's just <laughs> uh, it's just uh, it's the neighbors <laughs> su- su- sucky Wi-Fi. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, Phil. Um, it, you know, what they're saying is, is that uh, since we did go into Syria, then to pull out without uh, making sure that the populace is safe there, because, you know, what happened was, is you've got other countries in there. You've got countries like, uh, what do you call it? What's it? Uh, those guys uh, outside of Iraq, uh, the uh, Kurds. Uh, the Kurds are in there. Uh, but they don't have any air support. They don't have an air force. And if we leave, the Kurds are there without air support. We screwed them before. No, oh, Jesus, Phil, come on. You know, no, that's hey, not. That, you're not giving why, me an answer. Why? Why are the Kurds in Syria? What are they doing in Syria? They're trying to help the Syrians. Nah, the, nobody's trying to help. Well, why are we, These why, people are all. Wh- everybody that's there wants their own stuff. Uh, you know. Okay, so what? What are you? What are you benefit. saying? The Kurds want. I think the Kurds want southern Iraq. No. They've they yeah. never stated that. They've never stated that as a... Uh, well, that's uh, where they were, and we let uh, them uh, down. Uh, we didn't give them the no, support no. that they needed in Iraq. No, they didn't want part of Iraq. They wanted their own Kurdish territories. And that's where do you where, think that was going to come from? Well, they're, they're, in, Iraq. they're in northern Iraq, yes. Yeah. Northern Iraq or southern Iraq? I think they're in northern, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. I may be wrong. But, um, uh, but uh, you know, so uh, everybody. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Phil, yeah. Phil, Rob wants to say something. Who who wanted to talk? No, I I, I didn't say anything. Oh okay. No, I, oh Jeff. Was it me? Jeff. Yeah, I was just going to say that that they were in the northern part, yeah. mm-hmm. and that's where they've lived their whole life. I don't think it's not like they moved there. No, I understand. Yeah. But they want their own rule over the area that they're living. We understand that. Yeah. And and so that's that's part of Iraq, whether it's northern or southern, uh, you know. Yeah, but it's, it's where they have lived, and it is their home. Right. So turf. what are they doing in Syria? They're helping the Syrians. Oh, what are they helping the Syrians too? You know, it doesn't look like they did a very good job of helping them. They're all bombed out. Jesus. You know, Phil, and and Phil. you got the Russians. Phil, and you, got you, the Iranians. you are you are insane tonight. You are no, just you so the- out of it. You, you got s- the Russians and you got the Iranians and they're and they're there trying to uh, uh, make sure that their interests are served, and uh, you got uh, uh, um, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, who's the president of uh, Syria? Uh, Bal- uh, Bal- not Bal- Who's the president of Syria? Well, I'll let you just hang there. Uh, all right. Uh, so anyway, you know he he doesn't uh, want to give up power. And have you seen some of the pictures of that I, be, I believe it's Bashir, it like? Bashir Assad is who Assad. you're thinking of. Yeah. All right. Uh, so anyway, well, you're the news guy. You're, you're supposed to know those I'm things. I'm not the news guy. I'm the I'm, guy I'm who's. I'm the guy who's. I'm the guy who sits around the house all day because I don't have a job. That's. The, I'm know, not the news guy. Uh, I'm just a citizen, you know, <laughs> legal. 
And so, you know, so anyway, the country is torn apart. Do you think that it did any good for uh, the people of uh, Syria? And, you know, the Kurds are probably just looking for their own uh, sustenance. You know, they, they're looking to see what they can take. Every They're all in there with their hands out. Nobody, Nobody's helping anybody. The Kurds have been a, a people who have been uh, put upon and uh, vilified by, in, in the case of what we're talking about, the Iraqi government over the years, and have had to fight for their own independence. And uh, they usually are not, they are not expansionist in, in, uh, in their attitude. If, if there was ever a good guy in that part of the world, it's the Kurds. Is uh, something playing in the background? I don't know. There was. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, you know, I mean, it, it, to take on the Kurds like you are is kind of wrong. I'm not saying that the Kurds are bad people. I'm just saying, what are they doing in Iraq? I mean, in uh, Syria. They're helping. They're How helping. Do you have you, what are they helping have you seen the kids who they can't who, help themselves? Have you seen the kids who are like losing limbs and people who are dying because Assad has been going after them, and then yeah. and, and so the Kurds are in there as we were to try and stop that uh, that. Uh, uh, no, we weren't there to stop uh, 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 Bashir al-Assad. We were there uh, to uh, route out ISIS. That was that was the mission. That uh, that yeah. we went into Syria. That was for. part of it. Well, if rice, if ISIS has been routed, then I mean, there, uh, look, Trump wants there, to pull there out. is rampant genocide going on in that country. Why shouldn't we be there? If we, if there's any reason for us to be somewhere, it's when genocide is going on. Oh, well, you know, genocide has gone on in many areas of the world for many, many decades. Oh, then that justifies and, 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 it happening and, and anywhere? And oh, we've oh, never oh, been oh, there okay, for them. Okay, Phil, then I guess we don't have to. I Thank you. You made me feel better about this. Yeah. You made like me feel real history. much better about it. Anybody else want to call? I'm, I'm getting a <laughs> headache. Uh, right. Yeah, anything to say, Rob? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Well, you say... I don't, I, I don't agree with Phil, so it's... I don't even know where to start well, commenting. So. Well, you see, it's all your fault because you said, I haven't paid attention to the news this week. Anything happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, has anybody seen this whole thing on uh, deep fake? There is an, there's an article on CNN.com that I read this week mm -hmm. about what's coming. And we were talking about warfare and how much money we spend on weaponry and all that. The biggest fight coming our way is the fight in video and what's happening in video. You can manipulate video today. Oh, yeah. If you, if you go to the CNN website, you'll see an article on the business page that explains what deep fakes are. It shows you They're doing uh, it with examples. pornography. Uh, they do it with pornography. They're doing it. They got they Obama, Obama here saying... It, yeah, they're doing it with Obama, and you could hear him saying yeah. crazy things, and you could watch it, and you can't tell. So yeah. the U.S. government is working really hard to try to figure out how to combat it, to find out what is real and what isn't real. Because if we can't trust what we see in video, what? Where's our? Where's the? Where's the line? The line of what's the truth and what's made up well i i'm I gonna mean, i'm gonna take issue with you in, in one respect uh, uh, rob is that i don't mm -hmm. think we could ever trust video uh we we can't trust what we see on tv not because there are any nefarious reasons for it but because at least at one point television was just a square picture now it's a little wider and you never saw what went on in the peripheries of of that frame in other words what you were seeing was what the cameraman or the editor wanted you to see. The right. stuff that was, and, and I, and when I was in well, Chicago years ago and I was involved in the uh, demonstrations at the Democratic Convention and I, I was part of that, those people that got uh, uh, the, their asses handed to them by the- uh, I thought the you Chica were picking Hold up on. dry cleaning. Can I finish what I'm saying, Phil? Yeah. The Chicago Police Department 
um, uh, I kept saying that people didn't get to see what was going on either side of the frame, which was even worse than what was going on with what the cameraman was shooting. Uh, you know, mute Ray. M Ray, mute if you if you can. Okay, okay, sorry, so, yeah. sorry. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, uh, hold on. Yeah. There, there he goes. Yeah. What, what Rob was saying is it's worse than that. What Rob is saying is that they're manufacturing video that creates. Well, what I'm uh, saying is, but he, but, but he was saying we can't even trust video now. I don't know that you yeah. ever could really totally trust video. So if if you're looking at a at a at a at a portrait shot of a guy talking into a camera, mm -hmm. and it's just on this guy, yeah. you can pretty much figure that. As long as it's live, or mm -hmm. you think it's live, or you don't see any cuts or jumps in the video or cutaways, yeah, you then don't. you can pretty much trust what you're hearing. Like the picture of Jeff right now. I'm looking at it. I'm watching you guys on uh, on on your website, right? Right. The picture yeah. of you guys there. I'm looking at Jeff. His picture's not. There's no cuts. There's no changes. It looks like if he's speaking, I could trust what's coming out of his mouth because I could watch his mouth move. You could take. And they've done it, President Obama, and right. have him, just like Jeff, right there on the screen, and he's talking, and he's saying the wackiest shit. I saw the, him not say, tell. build a wall, you know, and, and all of those things, I, Obama, uh, they, yep. uh, and then I found out that that was a fake manufactured video. Yep. And uh, yep. so we're, you know, it's one thing not to see uh, at the periphery. But it's another thing right. not to, you know, and if I if I was shooting the shot and I was shooting a journalistic shot, I want something wide enough that's going to get the periphery so people can see what's going on. But, you know, what they're doing with these videos is they're actually creating a lie and mm -hmm. uh, and, and and putting it out there and perpetrating it. And people are being fooled. I was fooled. You know, yep. uh, watch CNN. Watch, watch. Go to CNN and look for it. Uh, they mention it. Fake videos. And it'll you click on the link, it'll take you to CNN Business, and they explain it. They show you, they show you um, how they do it. They show you how the government is looking to uh, try to find tools to be able to tell what's real and what's not real. There's a race to get that done because this could be really dangerous. They they need to well, avoid it, these it, things but, on it, social you know, media. You know, they're it, ruining people's it, lives. It's double. Uh, it's, yes. du it's doubly dangerous. It's doubly dangerous because of the nature of the internet. Yeah. Uh, exactly, and and the fact and that just, this kind of stuff gets out there, a guy like Alex Jones will play it on his show, and all of a absolutely. sudden it's everywhere. Yeah. Absolutely, and 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 just the way there are algorithms, like on YouTube, uh, when you upload something to Facebook, mm -hmm. if it has content that is recognized as copyrighted, you don't get to, you don't get to post it. Mm -hmm. They have to come up with ways that if the video is not real, they, and they show you in one of the in one of the, the examples, they show you a uh, a graph while the video is playing. They show you a graph that says, "Okay, we're comparing Obama's voice and all this to this graph, and we can show you everywhere it goes off where it's not right." And so they're going to be able to have they're going to have to come up with technology that does this and beat because they're constantly making this technology better. The government's got to stay ahead of the game, and they've got to force social media and the internet that if someone's going to upload a video, you have you're going to have to prove that this is a real video, because really this is the next. This could really do a lot of damage. Well, you I mean, I mean, you can you can you you can uh, recreate people, for instance. Uh, exactly, and and uh, we're 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 getting to a point where we we can do that. I think uh, I think it was we're done. It was done with Carrie Fisher. I think in the last Star Wars picture, uh, because the stuff she couldn't do, they managed to do with CGI. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so all this is possible. Uh, the question is, I don't think is, this stuff is CGI though. This stuff is like Photoshop, where they can take the head. Uh, well, that's uh, one person. What, what, do you, what do you think that's yeah, what not you, Photoshop? What is it? It's not Photoshop. If you well, it's it's actually a technology, and they show you uh, where they actually they take they take video of a person, and then they have a way to do data points around oh, the face. Yeah, where it looks like skeletons. Uh, it's, yeah, they, well, they, that's they what I'm talking about. It's around called the it, eyes, it, around the lips, and it's and, called and they, it's called CGI. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, they don't mention the word CGI. Well, in this I mean, article. when when you when you when you take the various points of the face, it's not computer generated. No. It's just they use computers to get this done, and uh, you got to read it. You got to watch it because they show you how they do it, and they they give you mm. examples. And, what, and what's and then what, and what's, there's actually there's actually video here of Marco Rubio. The only thing I think I've ever agreed with him on. He, he actually says, you know, we really need to get a handle on this because it could be extremely dangerous if if a if a deep fake video goes viral before it's detected. I mean, you know, the president can say, you know, I've just launched a a, a, mili- missile. a, 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 a missile. There's right. uh, missiles coming towards the United States, and I just launched the missile. And if people believe that, and that video goes viral, I mean, it's just. The things that can happen if we're not careful. We had that. They it was don't figure out War- how to do this. Or- Orson Welles, War-, War of the Worlds. No, it wasn't. You know? no true. That wasn't the true. Na- no, that wasn't the nature of War of the Worlds. War- no, no, no. But people, uh, it oh. went. You know, people got uh, didn't people tune in to the beginning, it. and and therefore didn't realize that it was fake. And uh, and there was a lot of uh, it's kind of like you it. just read part of just saw heard part of it and made their own decision <laughs> like you always do, Phil. No, it was so real, uh, you know. When and they showed Pelosi, they showed Schumer, and they showed Obama all talking about the wall, all supporting the wall, and it was this deep fake uh, video. Yeah, it, it's unbelievable. You could buy it. I'm telling you. Yeah, you can't tell. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, the people they're really worried about have 12 core Max because those are the ones that can do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping it's going to fit just right here. I'll, I'll find out. It's probably going to cut off a little bit of my screen, but I don't, I don't care. Put it behind it. Uh, nah, I don't. You got enough depth? No. No. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to rewire this whole place, and there's just. And I thought I had it all really neat, and then I found one wire that I couldn't figure out where it was going, and it was one that I just put in the other day. You know. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's not fun. I mean, how are you kneading it up? <laughs> hmm? How how are you kneading it up? Are you using you know, what are you doing to make it neat? I can't. It just re, you're taking everything out and putting them all back in. You know, but in four months it's going to be a rat's nest. It's a rat's nest already. That because the, here's the problem. It, it, you, let's say I have a camera, and it has a cord on it that goes into a USB port. All right. Mm-hmm. It's not the same size as the uh, uh, the, the USB uh, that goes into my uh, that takes care of my iPhone. Okay, and you coil it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, then you coil it, and you got a lot of coils. I mean, come on. It's just it's just they don't come out with the same size cord for everything or stand, certain standard sizes. If that were the case, then you could wire them together and make a nice little bundle and so on. Yeah, but some things are further away from the source than others, so you need longer cords. Well, for then something. you get extensions for those. But what I'm saying is, is that because every cord, I've got a a cord for my uh, my watch, my Apple Watch. It's this one here, and you see where it's sitting. Okay, we're here. This cord is so long it goes off the desk, down to the bottom, and into a, a receptacle. That's how long the cord is for this. Now the yeah. cord for my phone is only this long, okay? You can buy longer ones. And uh, you don't understand what I'm saying, Phil. If yeah, you I do. if you it's, wanted to you make can't things neat, organize. Yeah, you can't organize. So that no matter how lengths. neat you make everything, eventually it's all, you know, yeah. fucked. You know, so that's it's uh, it's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, is anybody else going to call tonight? Or is this going to be a, a is this going to be it? Uh, me, I thought that this is a bad crowd. Um, except for me. <laughs> hmm? Except for you. Um, but I, uh, you know, I, I, I think uh, uh, you're saying we don't have the money. We don't have the money. Listen, you know why we? One, uh, one of the reasons we don't have the money is your friend Donald Trump has been spending like a drunken sailor. Okay. Uh-huh. No, he really he's has. He's trying to stimulate the economy. And, uh, he, no, and no, he did. No, it's not working. It's not working. It's not going. Well, it's not trickling down to well, salaries. 
uh, I think it is because more people no. are employed. No. What's the, what's no. the no, 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 Phil, Phil, <laughs> Phil. You use the word employed. That's a very that's a number you don't want to even go to. Okay, well, because they are you, no. At How what, do you get at, less at, unemployment? Uh, uh, you employ them. Well, no, you employ them at less than they were getting paid before. Well, uh, unemployment, they can't get paid much less on uh, unemployment than they do at a, at a job. You, you, and, you know, and Phil, when they Phil, have a Phil, job, Phil, Phil, don't be, don't grows. be a fucking idiot tonight. It, it's, have, it, don't try to always come up with an answer to an argument. Sometimes you can even in, agree. The fact of the matter is, yes, uh, employment is up, but what people are getting paid is not what they were getting paid. So that really the income into their pockets is much lower. So it's kind of being, yeah, you're working, but. Uh, you know, what, what facts do you have that say they're not getting paid and maybe they're not getting as paid because as much we know as they we know we know we know what the average national income is. I don't have a number for you, but it's lower than it has been. Okay, but sometimes uh, you have to. You have uh, uh, Phil, in the Phil, economy, I, I, uh, and the economy I, I, will boy up. When did you go to Phil, work? When did you? All, all that money, Phil. Hey, that I went just, to Oxford. You went to I, all I walked, that money added walked, to the deficit is is your 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 grandkids are going to pay for. Yeah. Uh, all that money that, that that Trump handed over is gifts to all these companies. It's been happening that's, that way for years. Oh, but so that's not, good? Not, to, not, not gifts. But I thought your boy wasn't going to be that way. I thought your boy was going to be different. He was going to be the maverick in town. But no, yeah. he's just take, he, he, he The, the he fact is us. the tax cuts he gave people were only temporary for the for the average American, for and, the wait a minute, wait a minute. Handouts that Obama gave people, oh. uh, including what about uh, ism? What about ism? What about ism? What about ism? Well, all I ever get from you for an answer, hey, all I ever get for an answer from you is not a direct answer, but a what about? Well, look, Obama tried to stimulate the economy by with government handouts and government jobs. Trump is trying to stimulate the economy through tax breaks. By the way, I hit, I hit the table so much it says it looks like you've taken a hard fall. No, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, I was uh, I I was saying that I went to Oxford. I went to Oxford. I walked across the campus, and so therefore I went to Oxford. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay. You asked me, you know, it's very school. funny. Uh, anyway, so I mean, the point that I'm making is, is that. Uh, uh, you know, if it, 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 the fact that there are more people working right now doesn't mean they're working as productively as they were, or bringing back, uh, bringing home what they were bringing home. It's a uh, start. Oh, to Phil, fuck you. Yeah, it's you a know, we start. had a great economy before no, we the had, meltdown. No, we, we we had a we had a great economy under uh, under Obama uh, and and Clinton. You know, there's been times when I've said, you know, I kind of wish Clinton was. Uh, uh, ruling the roost again because he he did a damn you know he yeah did a but good under job. under his watch the the whole thing fell apart too that's when the whole Silicon Valley crash happened and the whole market just tanked during about the last year of his yeah. uh, of his time in office so same thing happened to Bush yeah um, but uh, you know I mean the fact is uh, this uh, tax uh, break that he supposedly gave all Americans is only temporary. But for the billionaires and for the corporations, it's permanent. You know, uh, you only so need unless we can roll it back. Unless you, we can only, roll it back, right? You only need a temporary tax break. Phil, to Phil, Phil. How do you feel? Economy. How do you feel about tax break for you and me uh, being temporary, and for the rich, it's not? Well, uh, come on, Phil. I don't know that it's not temporary for the rich either. You know, well, you, no, it you know, isn't, this, Phil. This is, this it's written the, into it. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Rob. Am I right? You are correct. Now, it's what permanent, do we get? It's permanent tax breaks for the wealthy and for business. As far as I know, the tax thing raised taxes on the rich and lowered taxes on the no, middle class. No, it did not. No, no, quite the opposite, Phil. Well, yeah. you you can believe uh, you know what you want to believe, but that's what no, uh, they, no, we were told. No, we weren't told that. We were told that the rich were getting a a cut in taxes too. It wasn't as much as the average American. It was only getting the temporary one, but uh, but everybody was getting a tax break. We threw money away when we didn't have that money to spend. 
yeah, uh, you know, we spent. Uh, well, you're 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 putting the financial well-being of this country in the hands of a man who constantly was going bankrupt. Well, you mean no? Oh, then he knows how to run our government. Oh, because uh, all what, we what, do is print Phil, more money. Phil, you're acting like a fucking moron tonight. You're yeah. trying to excuse everything with, oh, well, then he knows what it's like to go broke, and he'll keep us from going <laughs> broke. No, Thank he, you. he could just be spending like a, a drunken sailor. Well, you know, uh, when they spend on the military, California used to be a, a very vibrant economy when they had all the military spending uh, back in the 60s. Uh, California was, was very, very strong. Now, uh, Clinton closed down all these uh, bases, many of them in California. Uh, uh, you didn't have uh, the industry. I mean, Jeff was uh, worked for Boeing, was it? You know, yeah. you, were, you were able to benefit by that military spending, and it was good for the economy. It, it, was, good, it was good for the, you know, the country. Phil, a country, short term. A country that, uh, that derives its income based on the fact that it has wars has a false income. <clears throat> Well, that's been our way of making money ever since 1776. No, it hasn't. Yeah? Uh, after World War II? No, wait a minute, do? wait a minute. That, World War II was in, uh, it, it ended in, uh, what, 1946. It's far cry from 1776, Phil. It kept us, World War II kept us, our economy strong for at least 35 years uh, after, after World War II. And, uh, you know, in the uh, now the revolution that we had in 1776, yes, it was a war. Yes, we gained uh, our independence and independence costs. But, oh, uh, you know, I we, can't, we've I can't had a number you know, of You are being I mean, so maddening tonight. Yeah. Really, you are just so idiotic and moronic tonight. I can't believe it. Yeah. Uh. I you mean, know, you're, you're sorry. You're, you're, you you don't like a, 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 a an opinion different than your no, own. No, I don't mind an opinion different than my own. I just don't mind. As long a, as it's I yours. do mind a misinformed opinion, however. Yeah. yeah. So I just did a. I just read it. Uh, one of the main criticisms of the plan is that the tax cuts are not allocated equally across the income spectrum. Taxpayers earning between 308000 and 733000 would receive the largest tax cut. According to TCP, uh, that's the, 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 the website here, middle income taxpayers, those making between 49000 and 86000 would pay about $900 less or about 1.6% after income tax in 2018, while those earning 733000 and up get an average cut of roughly $50,000 or 3.4% of their after-tax earnings. If you are at 65,000, you'll you'll uh, it says if you earn 65,000, you'll save about $930 in 2018. If you make 500,000, you'll save 13,480. Look, uh, if you make 13,000, I mean if you make $500,000, you're paying a lot more in tax we're dollars. We're talking about percentages. But we're we're talking, talking about percentages. No, no, he's talking about percentages. 1.6. No, he's 1. talking about percentages. Listen, percentage. listen, listen Phil, 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 no he's no, not. I'm just just giving you the numbers. The numbers is this, the percentage is this. If you earn between 49 and 80, if you earn between uh, 49 and 86,000, you're getting a benefit of 1.6%. If okay. you earn seven thirty three or up, you get three point four percent after tax income break. Okay, but you, so when it's, you, it's you're, double. You're, you're as an individual person, Phil, you're Phil, paying so much Phil, more money. Is, does it, Phil, it, it, so it, the forty, so the forty nine thousand dollar person can afford a lesser tax break. Is that what you're saying? No, there's less money to break. I mean, he's not paying as much taxes. No, Phil, Why Phil, would, you're not getting the the message here. You're not listening. The fact is that the person in the higher bracket was getting what three point one six? Did you say, Rob? Three point uh, four. Over three point four. But the person down around sixty five thousand was paying what one point five? Uh, one point six. One point six. It's a, we're talking percentages here, Phil. What we're saying is the rich person gets to keep more money, more of a percentage of his money, than the person who makes less. When logically, listen to me, Phil, when logically, it's the person who's making less who needs more than the person who's making more. 
The person difference. who's making more is in what tax bracket? When you make over five hundred thousand dollars a year, Phil, you how feel, much Phil, tax you're are living you in a dream. You're in a world. much higher bracket. Phil, we really don't have what you call tax brackets anymore. It used to be, hey, if you got to this point, then the percentage raised. No, right. that's not the case anymore. Where, where, who, who does your taxes? I hope it's not you. No, I don't. Okay. I just write the check. Yeah. But I mean, Sometimes that whole concept about you're in a different bracket and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, it used to be a time where if you made a million dollars, everything over a million dollars, you paid 90%. Okay, right. but that's because you were in a different tax bracket. As far as- Yeah, uh, still tax brackets. Yeah, there are still tax brackets. You know, yeah. and and if you're making five hundred thousand dollars to a million dollars a year, you're paying a lot more tax than the guy that pays sixty thousand makes sixty thousand dollars a year. Whether you're saving one and a half percent or so three percent, you're still laying in, out a lot more money. In twenty eighteen, if you're single and you make sixty thousand dollars, you're in the the twenty two percent tax bracket. Okay, and you're paying. You're getting a one point six percent forgiveness if you will right you're getting that he, he dropped your taxes by 1.6 percent if you're in the if you're making 700,000 yeah your your tax bracket is 37 percent okay so there's a lot and more you, tax there to, but, you know. but still Phil yeah you're giving them three percent why would you give them a three percent so now instead because of you're charging them 30 percent more Based on his income, Phil. We're talking percentages here. We're not I talking about dollars. Look, no, if no, one you're guy not. Pays twenty two percent, and another guy pays thirty seven percent, and you give the thirty seven percent guy three percent break, and you give the guy who's paying twenty two percent one. If and a half the guy break, who makes I less money, it's one point six percent money that he gets back, or nine hundred dollars, as we were talking. The guy who's making more money. Gets three point one six, I think. Rob, am I right about that? I'm just yeah, freaking. but he's paying fifty no, percent more no, in taxes. No, no, he's not paying fifty percent more the in taxes. The difference between thirty seven and twenty two. Phil, he's not paying more in taxes. He's paying a percentage of his income as taxes, and that's called money. And that money uh, is a greater Phil, amount. Phil, I, you know something? You don't know shit about money. Yeah. Okay. You really, and I, do, I, I know I'm, probably even less than you do, but I know enough to know you don't know shit about money. Well. Honestly, I don't know anything about money. I just know how to make it. You know how and, to spend uh, it. And I know how to spend it. Yeah. <laughs> not on the not on the best things, but, uh, you know, yeah. uh, that's that's something they should teach kids in school is how to save that they don't. You know? Yeah. But all I'm saying is that, you know, that it would seem to me that really the people on the lesser end should be not paying as much as a per, of a percentage and they should be getting more money back wait a minute than the person who's wealthier because they don't need it as much and those people by the way on the lower end are going to spend every penny of that tax return you're hung up on on the low percentage difference between Phil the you didn't hear what I just you said no, you, don't see you didn't the, hear the what I just said Phil you didn't hear what I just said. What did I yeah, say? It's, what it's did I say? Focus. What did I say? Uh, we, that you were talking about the percentages, and the guy. No, makes, no, uh, no. That's not. That's not what I was saying at all. That's not what I was saying at all. I was saying that if you give a larger tax return to uh, a, pay, a rebate to uh, to to the people on the lesser end of the scale, because they spend every, almost every penny that they get they're going to return that money back into the system, whereas the richer person is going to hold on to that money. Uh, you know, uh, that's your opinion. I mean, I don't, no, I don't think the rich... No, that's pure hey, economics, I Phil. Spend, I spend everything I make. Okay, shut up, Phil. Jeff, am I right or wrong? Absolutely. I've got three kids who are all lower uh, than Phil's percentages that you accept mm -hmm. because they don't make that kind of money and, he, and you know what some of them have some pretty damn good jobs at the same time but they're not what uh, maybe I was able to get 20 years ago yeah easily yeah without, you know I, I you mean know? my income is not that much higher than it was 20 years ago <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and that's not Trump's fault. That's just, uh, you know, my education level and my uh, 
expertise. I mean, I just seemed to uh, stayed at a certain point and really didn't make that much more. You know, 20 years ago, I made pretty much the same as I'm making now. Well, I made, so, I'm making considerably less than I made 20 yeah, years Yeah, but you're ago. Sick, retired for all intents and purposes. No, I was retired. Yeah. I okay. didn't retire. Yeah. 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 The, the, is it retired or retarded? I never quite yeah. get that. Uh, you know, you know how I'm going to retire. Our, my, my head's going to fall down on the desk, and somebody's going to push me and say, "I don't think he's breathing." <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, ah, I'm tired. I'm ex I, you're exhausting you me. Well, consider. more. Well, some more people call tonight. It would be nice. It would. You well, know, maybe controversy. You don't want controversy. Well, it, uh, obviously, you're driving people away because they're not calling. They don't want to be part yeah. of this, Jeff. Well, I'm trying to say that I think with with uh, our ages, and, and I'll include anybody uh, here right now, mm -hmm. uh, our world is is designed, so to speak. Uh, we've financially designed. We know where we are. We know where we're going. Uh, there's not going to be a major change from us in the next ten years that I can see. Yeah, and. And, um, you know, I'll include that, you know, I'll guess Rob includes that. I don't know why, but I'm going to say that. But, unfortunately, my kids, uh, they got lots of stuff coming in. You know, they got young kids who want to go to, who are in high school right now, and they want to go to college. And, and they all want to do that stuff. And they want to go on vacations, and they want to learn things, and, and who knows what they want, what kind of uh, things, what kind of cars they want to have, or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, what kind of houses they want to ultimately have as they grow up. It's not as easy as it was before. And, and this system is not being beneficial to the people who need the money the most. It's right. going for people who, quite frankly, need the least. Be entitled. That's right. And no. by the way, by the no, way, by the entitled. way, those people who make more have benefited more from this society than those people who are like the drones who are making the $65,000 a year. And they have benefited from this country, so they should pay for it. Now, you got a guy like Schultz. Uh, and I know he's not the guy that designed peanuts, the guy that gives us the coffee. And uh, he's, he's saying that uh, he's not apologizing for uh, the, the system working for him, for the fact that he uh, made it and he, he went from nothing, from poverty, living in a, uh, a Brooklyn uh, uh, government-subsidized housing, uh, and today being a billionaire. But he says that you take the incentive out of uh, uh, people's uh, desire to produce when, uh, you know, this, look, 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 look how communism works. Is this from a guy who was paying his employees $10 an hour. Uh, no, people at Starbucks, I think. No, get, it's uh, ten bucks an hour. And they get health. They get health insurance. Uh, they get health insurance. Yeah, but he then when the when the city of uh, Seattle and Oregon wanted to raise the uh, minimum wage. I think to fifteen dollars an hour, he fought it tooth and nail. Even though he was bragging about how much he paid Starbucks employees, or their ten dollars an hour. I, I think they start at fifteen. No, they don't. It was well, ten dollars an hour, Phil. You know, uh, there there was a uh, there was a, a story I read uh, by uh, Emerson, uh, and he wrote some essays, and one of them was on compensation. And that's where I get my, uh, my um, opinion about that people need to work, people, and no matter what they do or how much they make, uh, it's, it's that that gives them satisfaction. Uh, and if you just hand people stuff, you're, you're crippling them. And, uh, you know, look, we've had all of these generations of, uh, of welfare recipients that uh, we've, we've uh, stuck, in, we, we've condemned them to uh, continue, continued welfare uh, because, you know, they're not, they're not working. They're not, uh, you know, Jeff Billy, is just saying. I'm, you talk out of both sides of your mouth because if 
we educated people, if we gave them free education through college, that would empower people to get jobs where they can make a salary. Well, so we that you, you don't, you're not in favor of that as a Republican. You're not in favor of that. But then you say that we're hampering people because we want to give them fifteen dollars an hour. No, we're not hampering because we want to give them fifteen dollars an hour. We're we're providing uh, a, a, a genuine job. But what we're doing uh, when we put people on welfare is we're cre we're creating generation after Phil, generation Phil, of people that are in trap. Phil, let me ask you this: as a woman, she's a mother. She has a child. She would, uh, isn't it better that she be, get a decent amount of welfare and be able to stay at home and raise that child rather than have to go to work and make that a latchkey kid? Uh, you know, uh, come on, Mr. Cruelty. You have, you have come on, Mr. Cruelty. Give me your cruel yeah, answer. Okay, go I'll ahead. Give me the cruel answer. The cruel answer is no, she needs, she needs to work. Uh, some hours. She needs to do something. So maybe that gives her the you, and you don't consider raising the kid and 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 making a good life for that kid at home to be How working. Many people have sacrificed. You don't and, consider. And, wait a minute, F Phil. You don't consider that working. Uh, no, it's just it, yes. It's uh, it's work, but it's also uh, part of what they just need to do to survive. Bree, you know? Bree, you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Isn't Phil full of crap? Not, not always. <laughs> but most of the time. Most, most of, the of the time. time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know. Phil, Phil, we're not talking. Yeah. You're acting like a woman who takes yeah. being a mother seriously and is a hands-on mother, and the kid is like four years old, so he, she, she really doesn't want to have to go to work because she'd like to be there to raise the kid and to be around the kid while he's that kid's in a formative stage. You're, you're acting like that's not work, Phil. That's like you're you just, acting like you, that's doing do, nothing. That's your you sexist do what you gotta attitude. Do. That's your sexist attitude. Yeah, you do what you got to do, and and you're sexist if you think it's only the mother that has to raise uh, children, and it's not the father. I quite you know? frankly, I I you know I think that uh, I I I would not mind if my tax dollars, and I still pay pay significant tax dollars, even though I don't make a salary anymore. Uh, if it went towards uh, towards how helping people stay home and raise their kids, yes, you know, and 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 you talk, you, you act as though welfare is this thing that a bunch of people who are deadbeats get, but the majority of the people who get it and get social security and so on uh, uh, are, are actually children are benefited the most by well, welfare. If the children got the welfare and not the mother oh, Jesus. or the Phil, father, fuck you. That would fuck be, you, you know, fuck you. You are just they, you, they, you try and, you try to make an argument for everything. You can't be sympathetic. There is not one but it, Phil. No, it's not. You you All right. You <laughs> Phil, oh, you're, so you're, yeah, I say let's entrap everybody. I say give the mother the welfare, make the kid uh, a second generation, and then their children a third generation welfare family. Sure, Phil, don't, I agree. Don't give I, them the I, benefit I, now, of earning now, if, the you, you, if you want to talk about how welfare is a trap, it's because of the way welfare is constructed in this country, where if somebody makes, uh, they're getting welfare, and then if they make a certain amount of income, all the welfare disappears. Well, that doesn't exactly work. No, that doesn't exactly work because the money, the cutoff point, is less than the amount of money they were getting in welfare. So there's no incentive for them to try and get out of that. If we staged down the welfare as they started raising in, in salaries and in income, then I think that uh, you'd have a good, good way to get people off of welfare without penalizing them for trying to get off welfare. What happens if they don't try to get off welfare because they figure, why should I get off welfare? I'm not going to make Phil, that much more. you're acting like everybody who's on welfare is a deadbeat, and that's just categorically not true. It is your white privileged attitude. Ah, bullshit. You know, uh, there, there are generation after generation of families that have been entrapped in the welfare spiral. 
And whether you think that you have the I answer just or not, explain, that's the I just explained the, the welfare they're, spiral. They're, they're I just packed. explained the welfare spiral to you, and apparently I didn't make a dent in your yeah. little cranium. No, because yours is, is your your well your explanation is, is a hope and a prayer. It's not the way it is. The way it is is they Phil, keep them is on wrong, welfare what is so wrong? that they'll vote Democrat. No. Oh Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. Somebody yeah. else take over. I'm I'm too weak to fight anymore. All right. I'll give you a Well, call. the good news for Phil is that Trump will likely win the next election. Nah. Be, primarily, be, primarily because the Russians uh, still have hacked, are able to hack all the systems, and nobody's done anything about you know protecting them. We're, we're not using paper ballots. So as long as that's true, I think Trump will win. They, well, they all, just have to all, also, to the Russians aren't. Looks, didn't didn't you know, the Russians it looks good enough? Didn't the Russians? That we don't ultimately do anything about it. Didn't the Russians? And do, then after that, we might say, "Oh, we better do something about it." But he'll be back in his second term. Didn't the Russians do something? So. To, I don't think he's going to win. I, I think so. Uh, Alex is trying to say something. Uh, uh, did, did, didn't uh, didn't did we get some news today that Mueller was pranked by the Russians, or there was something they did to try and discredit him? I didn't. Know. Yeah. Yeah, which is kind of plays, well, uh, makes his Russia investigation have a lot of <laughs> credibility. You know. But here's the thing about that. What, what crime was there originally that he was supposed to investigate, and what has he ultimately found? And are there things that he is finding no, directly his, no, related ultimately, to ultimately, the beginning? Well, ultimately what Mueller was supposed to do and he is continuing to do, and it all comes under that category, was to investigate Russia's uh, meddling in the election. That's really what the special counsel is all about, and that's exactly what he's been doing and hasn't stopped doing it. But he but, has found certain things where he needs people to fess up, and they don't fess up, so he has to take them to court. Which hunt? If that's what you yeah, want to call I'm, it, I'm Phil. against it. I'm against it now, Alex, because it's like when you be when you get elected president. Now, you get your own special prosecutor, like automatically assigned, and then they're just told, "Hey, go around and find any." I mean, from the standpoint well, of if you look at it as an anti-corruption, well, the worst you know, was what? Well, then I'm in favor. The of worst it. was the one. But I just don't know what's yeah. going on. And I'll tell you, they did not need all those SWAT teams to get that to go at that guy. It, I just see yes, that as a yes, 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 they did. Absolutely, and I'll tell you why. Because they knew that he had uh, inf he had stuff at his place, and they didn't want to tip off their hat ahead of time because he might have destroyed uh, uh, material evidence. He had two years to destroy it. Phil, he didn't. De he would destroy it when he knew they were coming after him. He didn't know they were coming after him. How and How maybe, and maybe, and maybe, he, maybe, he, maybe he wouldn't have. But, but they wanted to ensure. They wanted Alex to ensure. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me finish. They wanted to ensure that he wouldn't do that. No, they wanted to intimidate him. That's what they wanted to do. And you know, Roger Stone wasn't intimidated. You know, no, Roger Stone. Roger them. Stone was having the most wonderful moment of his life because if you know, if you know Roger Stone, this is a guy who loves getting this kind of attention. He loves the well, fact that they they they're going to put him on trial and that he's did they the guy they're the going gag after. Order? Huh? Wasn't there a gag? Uh, was there a gag order uh, no, I don't, on Stone? No, I don't uh, think they're, so. They're talking about uh, a gag order. Well, least, there's uh, no gag order in place right now. Yeah. Well, he will definitely get a pardon if he is if he is well, ultimately. he will he will get a pardon uh, if Trump's you know. in office, but Trump has only two more years, and we don't know what's going to happen at that point. Six more. You know, you oh, run he'll people. Issue it. Yeah, you run people like uh, no what, what's her name? In my mind, I have zero Kamala doubt. Harris. What? What, what, what are you babbling Trump. about, Phil? Uh, if you, if they, well, Kamala Harris is gonna uh, is gonna listen. Uh, you're from out. California. You should know it's pronounced Kamala. Yeah. Okay. Kamala. Uh, anyway, like she's going to fizz out. Anybody that comes two years before the election date. Yes, we know usually, that. We know that. Yeah. What are you telling and, us? You're telling something and, we don't you know, know? Yeah. Well, they have nobody to run against Trump. Who are they going to run against them? The best guy they got, they're, they're trying to uh, shoot him down, which is Schultz. 
Schultz isn't isn't good. I'll tell you that right now. Schultz is a, is a is a. What do you think, Rob? What do you think of Howard Schultz? Have you paid any attention to that? I don't know him, but I do know that we see what happens when you have a businessman trying to run government. Yeah, it's we don't. Not need, a good plan. Yeah. We need a career politician who's been through a governorship, a senator, a, a congressman, somebody who's been in the government who understands how government works. We do not need a guy from a boardroom trying to run this country. That's the old paradigm. Yeah, sure. Well, we're seeing it play out where we can't even seem no, to get. We're seeing the obstructionists. We, we how many? <laughs> we don't even have. It's embarrassing. Our 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 allies are, are around hey, the country. Phil, can you let somebody talk without jumping in? Let him oh. finish. How many right. how many how many cabinet posts are open? How many ambassadorships? How many appointed positions are open? Donald Trump is trying to run this government with him and his son. It's not the king. This is, is not the royal family. There are hundreds of appointments that are uh, stuck in whatever committee no, no, uh, the no, Democrats want to stick stuck them in. in. Anything. Yeah, uh, there's hundreds of appointments, and they're not being uh, put through. He hasn't Hello. asked for them, Phil. Hello, it's Phil. The Phil, they haven't asked. He hasn't asked for them. It's not that they're holding right. them back. He hasn't uh, asked. Yeah, Phil, he, he hasn't. He him. hasn't asked for them. He has been too lazy to appoint people to various positions. Nobody wants to work with him. Yeah, yeah, most of the people don't even want to take the job, right? It's a lose-lose situation to work with Donald Trump. You're either going to have to lie like he does and and stand behind his lies. And if you're that kind of person, like mm -hmm. Sarah Sand, uh, what's her name, Sarah Huckabee, Huckabee Sarah Sanders. Sanders, yeah, yeah, you know, then and if you could get up every day and lie like that, then yeah. you've got a job. By the way, Ray, you want to say hey. something? Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to say hello. Mm -hmm. I was listening to the conversation all the way down, driving down from Berkeley. It was really interesting to listen and not be able to talk. Yeah. And what were you well, I think there was a little bit of confusion on the tax thing. If if they're doing the numbers right, they're taking into consideration the brackets, and they're saying, given the brackets, they're still getting a three point four percent reduction of taxes. Correct. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. At that, at so that even bracket. though they're paying out more, Phil, they're still getting three point four percent of a greater reduction, given the fact that they're even. They are giving, actually paying more. Yeah, I think that's the point of the whole thing. They're, yeah, they're, the point is the the group that could least that could most afford to subsidize. Yes. Well, if you're going to do, if you're going to, and the poorest people should get a higher amount so that they can survive. Well, no, there's, I mean, right, but there's more to it than that. It's, rich it, poor. it's more to it than that. If you say that you are lowering taxes because you're trying to do that as an incentive to put a goose in the in the economy. By giving that money or the uh, a large amount of that money to people in the lower income brackets, where they're going to go out and actually spend that money, yes, is the best place to invest it. The That's fact right. is that the rich may just put it in the bank and say, "I'll put it away for a rainy day." And well, Ronald Reagan tried the other thing before, the supply side economic thing, and it failed. It doesn't work. It's not. It just. It's. It's a myth. Yeah. Where you give the money to the rich and they end up investing and, and making the economy better. It doesn't happen. No, you give the money to the rich and they keep it. Right. You know, and, and they, uh, the trickle-down theory was uh, the only thing that trickles down is pee from your dick, you know. Exactly. It never worked. Yeah. The older you get. Hey, yeah. Ray. It didn't work. Since Ray is I mean, here. Phil, it didn't work. You think it worked, Phil? Yeah. Well, it didn't. Go just go look at the numbers. You you remember the economy we had in the '90s? How good that was. But that was because of the bubble in high tech. That was. It had nothing to do with the trickle, the supply yeah, side. Supply you're, side you're, caused a huge recession. And 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 why did that whole you why, about that? why did the bottom <laughs> fall out of all of that? Because uh, the tech started to fail. There was and because of the supply side, we had one of the huge, the, the biggest stock crashes in the history of this country since the Great Depression. In nine, what was it? Nineteen. Um, 90s, it was in the eighties. Oh, in the eighties? I'm trying. Yeah, to in the late eighties, we had a huge. Yes, because of the supply, the trickle down thing didn't work. What was? It? Uh, yeah, we had a huge uh, 
crash in the market, 87 or whatever it was. When Reagan took over, uh, we had 18% inflation. You know, we yes, had, I know. You know, we had uh, terrible uh, inflation under uh, Jimmy Carter. That's right. And, and uh, w with this trickle-down economics, uh, the inflation was curbed. And, uh, was and, that because you know, of the so trickle? No, worked. was it because of the trickle down economics, or was it because of some other reason, Phil? That was what was instituted, and that and, and eliminated. <coughs> well, yeah, yeah, the but I mean, that was also the year I think I got laid more than other years, and so I guess that caused the inflation well, to go down, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Absolutely. what you're doing is you're trying to apply to inflation going down to something else that may not have had anything to do with it. Well, it, it just happened at the same time, so it isn't one a cause. And effect. I got laid more that year than, you know, so uh, I, I, must, uh, I'm, I must have brought inflation down. Yeah, well, you were making more money because of trickle-down economics, and you were able to pay for more women to come over because yeah, they wanted you. Yeah, Jeff, you wanted to say something? No, I was, I was going to say that. Uh, the economy, to to it probably caused, we had to buy a lot more condoms. No. Oh, okay, that's that's well, good. The anyway, latex anyway, industry anyway, is uh, Bree wants well. to ask uh, Ray a question. No more trickle down. Bree yeah, wants got, to I ask Ray, we, please pay oh, attention. Go. Please listen to well, me. It's funny, you know, when I went to oh, the building, uh, originally they wanted me to go at 10 a.m. And uh, I said, no, I'd be free at 11. And, and they said, okay, oh. that's fine. You know, which is very rare, by the way. Uh, I think I, I every time I want a certain dental appointment, a certain time I get it. So, and also each time the dentist has come in, you know, five minutes before my appointment, and there's no one else waiting. So I'm really, <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if this is the right place. Anyway, mm. uh, it, I there was a fire alarm test at 10 a.m. So I, which was good. I said I scheduled it at 11. Anyway, I had it put in. It didn't, it, it, when she put it in without the adhesive and the glue, it felt okay. Um, but then what, how it does this, wasn't if, perfect. So she, what does this have to do with uh, what we're talking about? <laughs> oh, it's what, what, it's well, trickling well, down. On, he's, you know, my, uh, he's the guru for, you know, well, it's my ability to talk about uh all of these topics, whether, whether my teeth will clatter or not. <laughs> well, you know, anyway. we're giving Alex a rest anyway. Uh, he, he, okay, he go ahead. Take go ahead. I, you know, I mean, ask you. Ask it it doesn't feel right, but I was told you gotta you gotta stay with it for two or three days to feel if it's right. Yeah, I would just wait two or three days if it still feels screwed up. You gotta call him and get him to fix it. What feels screwed up? Okay. What feels the screwed crown? Up? The if crown it feels the weird bite. in your mouth after like. Two, three, four days. Yeah, call them. Well, I mean, maybe it, the bite's it, not right. It just yeah. need, it, it can need, they got to yeah. adjust the bite or something. Yeah, they, they got to like sand the bite's off. Not right, and it doesn't look like a tooth. It just looks like a blob of like white bubble gum stuck. Is that in the there. temporary one or the? Uh, I think. You, I no, think you, the, the real one. Oh, well, that's not good. It was half off. No. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, no. I mean, it sounds, like it, it, it's, it's, it's what you're describing to me sounds like a temporary. Yeah, I think that I wasted four hundred and fifty dollars. What? Well, it's that on, was cheap well, on a crown. I'll come over that's and like waste yeah. ten times less than I pay. <laughs> yeah, he, he's not a satisfied. No, person. I asked. I asked my dentist uh, how much a crown would cost, and he said, "Well, it's a smaller tooth, so it might be fourteen hundred. You know, so yeah, when no, that's not that. when, when, you, when you talk grand. about a cheap crown, I just you know what I wish they would have are. There are two things I wish they would have. Number one, uh, walk-in uh, teeth cleaning places where you could go in and you could see a dental hygienist and they clean your teeth. And you, but why is yes. it you always have to go to That's the dental? Wait, let me finish. That's Wait. a great idea. Yeah. No, you can finish, but it is a good idea. My, my point is, why do I always have to go to the dental hygienist that works in my dentist's office? You know, why can't I go find my own dental hygienist or find a little company that specializes in that, like a walk-in, like I have a walk-in doctor here if I want to go see a walk-in doctor. You want to know doctor. why? You want to know yeah, why? Yeah, you're right, Alex, because they try to sell me, they try to upsell me when I'm in there. Oh, yeah. You know, as I was getting the crown, she's like, oh, that other tooth is going to need it. Oh, and maybe we should do the top one. Oh, we got a sale on cleaning. Well, the reason you know. that the hygienist is in the dentist's office is, first of all, they're working under the dentist uh, and his license. Number two, uh, the dentist then is, is able to do an exam uh, after the hygienist cleans the teeth 
he does an exam to look and see if there's any other problems going on with your teeth. So it's a twofold thing. You're not getting the benefit of, of a dentist when uh, you just go into a place that's only hygienist. But it sounds like a good idea. No, but I mean, the point is that, that uh, for many times I have had to use the hygienist in my dentist's office and I didn't like them. I didn't like what they did. I didn't like their demeanor. I wished I could go somewhere else and get another hygienist. And, uh, in fact, I think I even asked one of my dentists, is there any way I can go to another office and use their hygienist rather than yours? And he said, no. <laughs> you know. And so that should exist. And also, you want a crown? It's no great magic to make a crown. You can go, it would nice, be nice to be able to go somewhere. They fit a crown for you, and they sell you a crown, and they're competitive against each other. And so, okay, well, we can give you a crown for $400. So we don't have to charge you $1,400. But what happens is your dentist puts that, makes a mold for the crown, sends it out to a place, they make it, and then she, uh, he or, in my case, she, doubles the price of the crown and makes that profit off of it. If I were able to go to a place where I could go to the people who make the crowns and they fit them, I would probably pay half the price. Yeah, they're called dentists. No. Wow. Well, no. You, you know what? My, yeah, my, minute, crown, my guy, my minute. dentist, he has somebody make the crown, and then another dentist comes in and matches the color and paints it and stuff. He could actually, if I could just go to that guy who he got the crown from, I get it way cheaper. But he comes in and no, helps out. No, but and you're, then they you're, have you're, but your dentist, your dentist, literally double takes the price that they pay yes. for the crown and charges you du double yeah. that price. Yeah. So they That's make right. they make a big markup, uh, and they do very little. All they do is they fit the crown. So if you could go into a place, crowns are us, and they would fit the crown because that isn't a that isn't a dental procedure. Yeah, you have to grind the tooth down. To fit uh -huh. a crown, uh, you have you you have to grind the Phil, tooth down. Phil, Phil, yeah. you oh, don't. Oh, that's terrible. It, she, it, your dentist can can grind the tooth down, can put a temporary in there, but you should be able to go somewhere else to buy the crown. So you want to cut out the profit for the dentist, so he has to charge twice as much to grind it down, just to make up for the lost profit that he's not getting on the sale uh, of the crown. They, they it's can, all. Uh, you know, when you go to get your car tuned up, you don't bring your spark Phil, plugs with Phil, you. Phil, what is wrong with me being able to get a crown at half price? What's wrong is you're you're taking the incentive away from the dentist to make enough profit to. Oh, oh uh, to, I'm taking to I'm taking living. I'm taking enough incentive away from the dentist so they don't do something to my teeth where I need a crown. My dentist drives a Porsche Turbo Carrera. I think he's doing okay. So does mine. I should <laughs> a look convertible. What what, what, we, what Bree? I should look to see what my dentist drives. But what's yeah. funny is, I don't know if you remember, but when they took the bottom mold, it took one of my other crowns off. So the crown manufacturing place made two crowns, one for the gold one and one for the new one. And she said, do you want to replace the gold? I said, no, the gold is bad. But they had made two, okay. you know. So apparently it's very cheap and easy to make it. Here's another, yeah, and it's it, pretty low-paid people that make them. Okay. Here, yeah. Here's another. Here's another question I have about crowns. I have, for instance, a crown here that's been falling apart for a long time. In fact, I have two of them. Uh, and under what is underneath the crown? It's it's a it's gold or metal or whatever, right? So what they really do is they take this metal and then they also put some porcelain. They bind some porcelain to it, and you've got your your tooth, right? Uh -huh. Why can't they take this tooth out and send it out to be repaired and put new porcelain on it? Why do I have to get a whole new crown to replace it? They well, have I was to adhere told it. to get metal and porcelain. And now let me ask let me let me ask the million dollar question because most of these crowns have a gold base, all right? Uh, what Mine happens? What, what, well, uh, uh, it, uh, most of them are uh, gold. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever had your dentist go, okay, well, we just replaced your tooth. Here's your old one. They should give it back to you. They don't. Mm, wow. They no, never the sell it. Next time, I'm going to make sure I get it. Did you, now that you said that. Yeah, did you, ever get it, it. did you ever get it back? Yeah, they sell, the, sell, it, for the gold. They sell it. it for the gold. Oh, yep. if it's gold. It's, it's yours. You paid for it. 
A good it's, one. A it's good gold, one. but it's not that pure of gold. I don't give a shit. I want it. It's a precious metal. Speaking fill, of which, and palladium money. is apparently more expensive than gold, and people are ripping off catalytic converters now. Really? And, and using that? them on their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> the new grill. But uh, no, I mean, I just, I, I think that you know, when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I hate saying that because I sound so old when I say that. Now, I am so old, and that's why I'm saying it. When I was a kid, to begin with, as I said last night, my dentist was in this office. He, while you walked in, there he was. There was the chair. You didn't have a, he didn't have an assistant. He didn't have anything else. He just had a drill and a shit-eating grin on his face and charged you $5 per surface if he did a filling. All right? Today, what do we got? Oh, man, this has turned into this just incredible industry. I mean, dentistry in those days, uh, it just didn't have a lot, didn't make a lot of money being a dentist. You know? Alex, when it was $5 a surface, uh, what was the rent in your building? It was like $500 a month, $300 a month. Now it's seven, 8000 a month for the same, for Phil, for the same place. To get Things an, go to up. To get an implant will cost... In the vicinity, six, up to six grand, anywhere from five to six grand, depending on where you go and what, how much needs to be done. Uh, I somehow think that whole process could be done a hell of a lot cheaper, and people would still walk away with a profit. Yes, you Jeff. Know why yes, Jeff. Jeff had his now? hand up. Just had, okay. Jeff had his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Oh, turn your mic on. Uh, you're you're muted. <clears throat> Did, have we ever found that Costco? Does teeth work? No. no, they don't. Uh, uh, can it, I? Would not be pretty uh, effective. Can I answer the question as to why it costs six grand for a tooth? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a machine that they buy. It's an oven. Uh, it's a, sp a very special oven. And then there's a laser machine that uh, that makes the tooth. Uh, and then they have to put it in this oven. Phil, to, I'm not uh, talking about the tooth the part. I'm, uh, okay. No, I'm talking machine, about the implant. That machine that makes the implant costs $160,000. No, no, no. They don't you have those at your dental office. So does his car. Yes. Yeah, no, many, they. Many, some of them no, do. No, well, my, my dentist many, yeah. does. Well, if, if your dentist my does, sold that's those fine. Machines. If you, it, that's fine. But my dentist sent out for mine. Okay. And by the way, that crown. Doesn't cost fourteen hundred or fifteen hundred. It costs nineteen hundred. Well, you see, what's happening is he sends it out, but still that guy had to buy the machine, and and there's a cost involved, and he's transferring that cost to the dentist, uh, and then therefore he transfers it to you. But those machines are expensive. You can invest a quarter of a million dollars into being able to make those kinds of teeth, and uh, you know in. Four years, that technology is going to be. But overhead, doing an implant is different from making the tooth fill. It's all no, part of no, the same it's not process. all. No, it's not all part of the same process. Uh, you, okay, you put the post in. And my all dentist, stuff, but I bet my dentist put in the post. He put in the uh, the uh, there's some kind of little special attachment, and then mm -hmm. uh, they sent out and had the uh, my my other dentist went out and had the tooth made. Right, because he didn't have the machine, but the other guy bought the machine, and he's got to get paid All for it. All I'm saying is the implant itself cost five thousand dollars without that fucking tooth. Okay. <laughs> you need the tooth no, to you're finish arguing, the implant. Bill, you're arguing as if the dentist is Trump. <laughs> and Alex. <laughs> No, nah, no, nah, he. But Alex hey, wants to at what, po at what point? Could be at what point in this wanted. fucking life do I get a break? You know, there is no breaks for you guys. You know? If I were Trump, I would say, "Hey, this tooth doesn't feel right. I ain't paying." Yeah, yeah, yeah right. That's what you should do. Well, he has a bad tooth. He combs it over. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that dentist has got to pay, Phil. They got to pay for their machine. <laughs> yeah, so, well, that's what those machines cost. Whether you know, that dentist I mean, has it or another guy down the street has it. Uh, somebody's got to pay for it. I, you know, I'm what I always got sick and tired of were, were were dentists and doctors who would say to me, "Well, the reason we have to charge what we charge is we have to pay back for our education." And I go, yeah. "Well, you're 70 years old right now. Haven't you paid it already?" <laughs> <laughs> they say the same thing about the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, you know, you know the toll was supposed to stop when it was paid for. Right. And, yeah. uh, right. and that was in '75, I think. 
Yeah. Now they're going to raise it to what? Ten bucks? So yeah. God, I remember I mean, when it was. A, I remember when and it was they, they, like a trade. I remember when it was twenty-five cents right. each way. Each way. Yeah. yeah, that's why they had them on both sides. No, in fact, I think it was less than that when I was a kid. It was like the dime or something. It was just ridiculous. Hey, you know, just think about it, Bree. Your, your dentist, uh, you, you just said, um, uh, oh, geez, what would you say? Uh, I, I just I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> Good. You know, uh, can I raise a new topic? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. please. Um, I like phones that have two screens. Okay, they have... E ink on the back, and then they have LED on the front. And because most of the time my eyes hurt, so I like to be able to, you know, use the e ink screen if I'm on the train or something, and it doesn't use the battery. Yeah. So I bought one online from AliExpress. I don't know. Have you guys I never heard, heard of these? No. Okay. So the last two months, I bought everything on AliExpress, and I love it because it's usually about a tenth of the price of Amazon. So I thought, like, how can Amazon exist in this world if AliExpress exists? Well, how, AliExpress how's, that, how's, that, how's that spelled? Ali, like O-L-L-I-E or A-L-L-I-E? No. A-L-I. A-L-I. Oh, so is that Alibaba? Is that? Yeah. Oh, Alibaba. Yeah. So, it's so, but here's, so it's the Chinese, right? Yeah. Right, but here's the thing. If you can go direct through... Uh, you know, an e-commerce site that's based in China, why would you go through Amazon? Because Amazon is just getting it from them and marking it up. So most of the time I get cheap. So anyway, I ordered a phone. The phone came. It wasn't the right phone. And I, and I wanted to send it back. And the seller said, no, I don't take returns. But AliExpress said, no, within 15 days, he can return it. So I return it. I have to pay the, the shipping fee. And now the seller says... I, w I would like 100 U.S. dollars because you damaged the phone. Now, I didn't damage. I didn't damage the phone. I, I and I took pictures of it. I have video of it too. But then I found this guy's website on YouTube where he, the person who sold me the phone, where he does you know demonstrations of the phones he sells. So I wrote on there. I said, look, folks, if you buy from this guy, he's not going to let you return it. And if you return it, he's going to try to charge you. Uh, say you damaged it and charge you and I have evidence that that's not true so underneath he wrote a in Cantonese a, a very threatening curse uh, curse words and swearing mm. so I screenshot that and I, I sent it to YouTube and I sent it to AliExpress to say you know this is not how you treat a customer you know so what were you buying you. what were you buying from AliExpress you bought a phone a phone oh. fentanyl Oh, <laughs> fentanyl! Yeah. <laughs> well, the it's, a big, it's a big seller in this country. <laughs> yeah, that's why we need the wall. Yeah, so, that's right. Phil, have you ever had any customers <laughs> who've been so bad that you cursed them and swore at them? No, uh, because I believe that any time a customer is that upset, it's the fault of the salesperson that they either left them to believe that something was going to happen that didn't, or they told them that something was going to happen that didn't. So I, I trace it all back to uh, a poor salesman, and uh, I, I wouldn't let that happen. Uh, well, that, you I know. filed a complaint and had the same, and I said, uh, you know, this is somebody out there who is using the AliExpress name and I have, and they're putting a public, you know, cursing and swearing on YouTube, which you're not allowed to do. And actually, what's funny is if the person had done that to me in person in the country I live in, they could go to jail. Really? Yeah, they could be arrested. Yes, you cannot swear at someone. Uh, yeah, but Bree, those words were uh, were terms of endearment in his country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're Fuck you, motherfucker! <laughs> well, I, can't, I, I went and looked at AliExpress here. I can't figure out where it's from exactly. Uh, I can't even get uh, it. Well, it, uh, it's it not part. Of, it's, own... No, it's not part of the Alibaba group. No. 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 It's part of I think JD and Taobao, JD or Taobao or something like that. Yeah. It's based on. I, I was car. talking about. I was listening to this uh, Fresh Air today, and they were talking about how Huawei is going to control the five G network. Which is really scary, because it's the Chinese will be able to sort of spy on us and do whatever they want well, to us. We're Huawei is that. having uh, some issues with our government and the, and the Canadian government. 
It's uh, because of that. It's that was because, because of that. Huawei sold to Iran. But I have to tell you something. Um, Huawei is the tip of the iceberg in terms of Huawei is that whole thing. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know where to begin, but let me just say this. All your phones are tapped all the time by the governments. That's With that understood, then you can then start to talk about Huawei. But if you think your phone is not monitored and tapped, well, you're wrong because it absolutely is. No, no, I think it is, but it's probably, it's by the United States. But then what's going to happen is, is the United States is going to not be able to have precedence over China tapping our phones. You know how we can defeat China and Russia and all of these things? Is let them listen in on our phones because the conversations I usually have is, did you eat? Uh, yes, I ate. What did you eat? <laughs> That's bad for you. Don't eat that. You know, I, the, the Chinese and the Russians, they'll go nuts. Uh, you know, with boredom. Well, that's not uh, what they're they looking. They just get really hungry. That's not what yeah. they're looking for, Phil. It, I know. I if know. they if they control the system, uh, they can control uh, a lot more. Um, and uh, I used to have a radio when when cell phones were analog. Mm -hmm. I had a radio in my car that you could hear cell phone uh, conversations uh, yeah. in, in the analog world, and uh, they were all stupid. You know, they had no. Boring. Yeah, they boring. were boring. Yeah. Uh, you know, even if you could listen to it, you didn't want to. You know? And you usually hear one side, too. It's one person droning on yeah, about their dinner or what the hell they did yesterday. I'm like, Jesus Christ, you have a boring life. Well, they I'm to listening to you on my radio. Yeah, they can come on Gabnet and do that. <laughs> I'll tell you how far you I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how you far I... pick up the phone when you were a kid? I remember it was like, yeah. you'd hear some neighbor talking on there. Like, Party line. I'll yeah. tell you but how you'd only hear one side. <laughs> I'll tell you how far I've come in my life. I remember, and I don't know if anybody remembers this. Do you ever remember your phone being a party line? Yeah. For about two weeks. Where uh, My where, parents got a second line, and that was a party line. That no, lasted no, two no, weeks. No, 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 no. This was actually you had to share a line with somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, in San Francisco, yeah. my, I remember my, grand, my uh, grandparents had that. One of those at a lake house. Yeah. yeah. And so you, could, you would pick up the phone to go make a call and there's somebody talking on it so right. you have to yeah. hang up and then you'd wait and then you go well these people ever get off the fucking finally you'd say something would you please get off i gotta make a call here yeah you know yeah and i think for a long yeah, time I mean, after that some of the hardware up. never got changed it's some of the hardware never got changed and you'd still hear like like you for years after you'd still hear like half the party line you well, know? We, well we we we, we could get no we we could get in that we could get into a whole uh, it's too late to get into it, but just the fact that the phone company at, at a certain point was starting to get conned by people like you and me. People came along with the black boxes and the blue boxes because the old system was so antiquated that you could hack it easily. Yeah. I mean, all you had coming into your house was two wires and you hooked into that. And if you learned how it worked, you know, I mean, um, how did Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak signal, start out? Signal generator. How did they? The, uh, some sort of signal generator. Right, will you let me finish, Phil? Please. Well, you said, how did he Can do I? It? No, no, it wasn't a signal generator. They made uh, blue boxes and they made black boxes. That's how they made right. their living originally. The black box. Uh, I think it was the black Need box. A... You let me finish. Okay. I know about this stuff. All right. Well, then tell us. Oh, you needed a 2600 cycle tone. No, uh, and, no, and that, that wasn't it. That wasn't all it. Right, all right, go ahead. I'm talking about one of the boxes, which was, I think, the black box was a simple one. You could make a call. Uh, somebody could call you long distance, and you could talk to them, and the phone company would never know that the, the uh, call had been completed because it created a, f a constant line even though you were able to talk to the person. They found that out. The other one you're thinking about is the, there was a, a whistle that came, it came in every package of Captain Crunch. And there was a guy known as Captain Crunch, and he found that by whistling into the phone using it, he could call anywhere in the world for free. <laughs> but if you had a signal generator, you could do the same thing. Yes, but, but it was cheaper to go get a Captain Crunch whistle. Isn't that's what Steve Jobs was selling in the beginning, right? He, they were making those, yes, they were making blue, signal generators. They were making blue boxes and, and black boxes. Yeah, right. So, so when you can, blow, that's the signal. 
So you can make people used free to steal calls. cable television all the time too. You just go. Oh, like, oh, oh, that. oh, that was that was because the cable companies in the beginning were idiots yeah. and they ran the the cable through the closets in the apartments. Well, because they were in the apartments, you could just cut that wire, siphon off, and get your own cable. They had a yeah, filter. Like, yeah. No, no, they just went no. On the pole and so what they did the is table. they finally <laughs> learned that they had to like run the cable outside the apartment where they had access to it. You see all those people hanging on the side of the building saying, there's the filter. <laughs> Cut it. Uh, yeah. I once found one of those cable wrenches that you could go over the filter and unscrew the cable. Yeah. And, and I don't know what I did with it, but nobody has those anymore. But uh, a couple times. Yeah, I, well, they're all got free cable. They've, they've changed the technology, so you can't really and see And I bought a box. Well, they used to, well, what? I, what? I used to do that, actually. Yeah. And they can measure the signal loss or degradation, you know, before and after house, so they know how many TVs are, are hooked up or whatever. I oh, mean, historically, you? now I'm sure it's all. Yeah, because there was attenuation, so they had to, along the cable, every mile or so, they had to put a booster, and, uh, and then they encrypted it, and now it's all digital. Well, you know, with those filters, the signal went through. Every signal went through. It's just that they would filter or scramble uh, that signal if you didn't pay for the Showtime or the HBO or whatever whatever it was. But I also right. had a box. I think I paid 200 bucks for it. And uh, I got every channel, including the Playboy channel, yeah. uh, pay-per-view. Well, they, they have that now in uh, last just 15 in years. newspaper and in Singapore. You buy a TV box. And you know it's like a, a box, you, and you pay two hundred bucks for it, and it they give you a, a certain number of movies on the device, and then you can stream from an illegal site in in China. And they're cracking down on those now, because they're not paying the intellectual property rights. But you, they call them TV boxes. If you look it up, it was in um, the the Star. The newspaper is called the Star in uh, Malaysia. You can just put up Android TV boxes. Malaysia, the Star, Alex, and you'll get the, uh, the articles. Was, uh, the original Sling TV in New York City uh, had some sort of deal where they were rebroadcasting the uh, the signal, and uh, didn't and they got stopped. Do you remember that, Alex? No. Oh yeah, it was uh, it was called a Sling Box. Oh, I remember and, the Sling oh, Box. Yeah, sling TV. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I I have Sling now, but it's different. It's not a Sling Box. They, that's that's the same company. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's the same company. You could still use your sling box. Yeah. Yeah. Mar Marjorie had yeah, one. There was one called Aero. Aero TV. Yeah. Uh, that was also out of New York, and they were trying to figure a way to get anal get analog TV yeah. and then stream well, it online. There's, there's the theme song, thankfully. And, um, <laughs> boy, you guys have run me through the mill tonight. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Um, anyway, uh, thank you, Jeff Stein, for being with us this evening. You've been a good boy. Uh, Rob, you've been a good boy, too. Bree, you're, you've been a pretty good boy yourself. Uh, uh, Ray, you've been a good boy. We won't talk about the bad boy in the room, the one who exhausted me this evening. Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? <laughs> anyway, uh, what I think you all ought to do is give a big wave goodbye to the people out there so they can uh, uh, wave back. Yeah, and I'll wave at you, and that's it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, everybody. Uh, that's our uh, citizen panel for tonight. Uh, that's our program for tonight. Uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's going to be here with a little program uh, that is uh, entitled The I Intersection, and that will be uh, followed tomorrow night at 9.30 with Damian Chaplin. And then tomorrow night, I'll be back again, 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night, okay?